The United States is known as one of the world's most prosperous countries. With one of the highest per capita incomes, many of its citizens enjoy big homes, fancy cars, fashions, and the latest in entertainment, electronics, and modern conveniences. But even in this land of plenty, there are those who are homeless and hungry. More than 45 million Americans live in poverty, according to its federal government standards. Substandard housing, hunger, unemployment, poor access to health care and medicines, even in America, even today. Who is there to help today's poor? One of the largest volunteer groups is faith-based and carries on the work of the Catholic faith and its patron saint of charity, St. Vincent de Paul. Calling Vincent, are you out there? Can you hear the cries of the poor? They cry for hunger, they cry for justice, they cry for housing, they cry at our door. Can you still teach us, Vincent, the charity you knew? As we live our faith in action, will these lessons still hold true? Calling Vincent, are you out there? Can you hear the cries of the poor? Coffee. Sweet low sugar. On an otherwise ordinary Tuesday, what looks like an otherwise ordinary lunch is in fact a welcome respite from the outdoors for Malika Williams, a Baltimore woman who's homeless. Living from different place to different places, in and out of emergency rooms, um, outside, in tents, um, anywhere I could possibly lay my head without being harmed. Malika's parents passed away when she was just a child and she and her siblings bounced around from home to home before ending up without one of their own. That's been her life these past couple of years as she struggled with seizures and other medical issues, making it very difficult to hold on to a full-time job. It's extremely stressful. I think that's where my a lot of my sicknesses come from because I'm not always in a safe place like when I've slept on bus stops or abandoniums because I had nowhere else to go. This is not safe, nor is it healthy. Enter Beans and Bread, a special work of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul of Baltimore. Its one-stop location provides showers, meals, and a wide array of resources to get people like Malika back on their feet. I'm without a home, that's it. As far as my personal hygiene and my dressing and things like that, a lot of people, are out here with a mental condition to where they feel as though their hygiene is not important anymore. So I believe in there's places like this where you can come shower and brush your teeth and fix yourself up. There's places that give out clothes and stuff like that where you don't have to look like what you're going through. And I try to dress for success. Vincentian Pauline Manalo, the Baltimore Council President, says it's individual attention, the person-to-person -person service, that's a key aspect of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul's work in the community. And with the Vincentian charism, as St. Vincent de Paul said, service without reflection is simply work. So, you know, it's important that we as a conference and we as Vincentians reflect on the encounter, meeting with the people who seek our assistance to see Christ in the person that we're trying to assist. And the people providing assistance may be the only sign of Jesus some folks have seen in a while or ever. It's not uncommon that, you know, that we would have uh, our neighbor in need, you know, after extending assistance to them and, you know, working with them, you know, suddenly ask, um, what time do you have mass in the church, you know, or what time are your services in the church? So they, or they ask for a Bible. 
So, you know, you never know when, um, you know, you've planted that seed of, um, you know, on, on them, you know, to try to get to know Jesus themselves. Today our menu is piece of casserole and corn. Serving people with dignity and respect inspires Catholic volunteers Phyllis Keehan and Haley Knott. But you have to be gracious to them. They're people. They're, you know, they're, they're just down on their luck and they're just in need of a little bit of help. I love interacting with the people. Um, you know, sometimes we have little conversations. Uh, it's really nice. It's nice to know that you're making a difference in their life. Inside Career Connections here at the Beans and Bread Center, computers are provided so that folks can look for work and apply for jobs. For Derry Whitaker, persistence paid off. I come in and get on the computer, I look up jobs. It's been a long road back to stability and self-sufficiency for Derry Whitaker. October 22nd, 2013, I lost my wife and it took me in different directions. Believe it or not, I end up being homeless. Derry lost his job and with no income, ended up losing his car and his home. His situation was spiraling out of control. That's when he turned to beans and bread to get his life going in the right direction. I was standing in a shelter, but I also got some, you know, food from here, resources, you know, I've talked to people about my situation. Thanks to the resources at Beans and Bread, he has a job now too. It makes me feel great. You know, it's an uplifting thing. It's another step, another level for me. Derry has been saving up for a deposit and hopes to be able to move into an apartment soon, something he owes to the people of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul of Baltimore. It says that they are very good, good people. You know, they're willing to open up their hearts, their hands, their time. You know, they're dedicated, they're dedicated to people. For the first time in a long time, Malika has hope too. This is the first place I've came and actually gotten with. I've actually been looking for, which is someone to help me help myself. Helping Malika and others help themselves has proven to be a blessing to those who serve at Beans and Bread. I have been blessed in my life. God has been so good to me. And so I need to give back to somebody else to say thank you for all the graces that he's given me. It definitely um, makes me want to do more work like this and uh, pray for people more like this. You know, it's so easy with the work that we do, especially when we get so busy, to forget that, um, you know, um, that what we are about is really, you know, our own spiritual growth. So, I, you know, in many ways it actually has to help me, um, you know, hopefully grow spiritually because I have a deeper sense of the presence of Jesus in my life. While it has not been easy, Derry and Malika are determined to overcome their obstacles. I am grateful. This is a blessing. But I believe that God has a plan. And with this plan, all things is possible. Over here, we normally have two or three rows of beans. Then somewhere on this half, we usually have the beets, the onions, and the cabbage, I think, over there. Brothers Sam and Luke Zeschkreski show us around Lacey Garden in Fitchburg, Wisconsin, just outside Madison. Work in this garden is a true family affair. Well, originally Ryan came a few years ago and he'd take the older two and I'd stay home with the younger, but as they've gotten older, then we just all come and the littlest ones make the people around us smile, so they do their part. As part of their Vincentian calling to serve, Ryan and Lauren Zischkreski plant, weed, and pick nearly every Monday in this St. Vincent de Paul garden. So in the spring, we start with uh, planting. Um, and then during, as the things are growing, then we take care of the, keeping the weeds down so that things can grow. And then um, the favorite part is once it's fully mature and we get to harvest it, that's what the, the kids enjoy the most. Cabbage, tomatoes, potatoes of a variety of sorts, and we have, well, radishes. Let's, I picked, I think, two weeks ago. And, well, more plants than I've ever grown in my gardens before. 
Tom Dobbins, a student member of the Vincentian Conference at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, knows the fruits of his labor are making a difference in the lives of his neighbors in need. It's really nice giving away healthier options. A lot of times if you're just giving away canned goods, it's a lot of that isn't very good for you. And so it's nice giving away healthy options. Vincentian Mark Miller agrees. This produce is a healthy food to eat because it's fresh. Mark is drawn to the garden because he wants to do his part to help those impacted by food insecurity. You know, everybody should have enough to, to eat. You know, that should be, you know, nobody should be hungry in this country. So the, the food pantry um, downtown Madison, um, it's a unique food pantry where you know, there's actually fresh produce you know, on, the, on the shelves for people to pick. Um, so stuff that we pick tonight um, will be there tomorrow for them, typically. So That quickly? Yep. The produce from Lacey Garden, like these beans, wind up here at the St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry in Madison. Recipients say the healthy veggies are a welcome addition, a basket full of food that really stretches their budget. It's expensive at the grocery store, but when it comes to the vegetable selection here at St. Vincent de Paul, it's, it helps out a lot, my budget. Lavendi Smith says she appreciates the variety of items she finds at the St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry in Madison. They look good. I come here and I get corn, potatoes, cucumbers, tomatoes, a whole selection of vegetable on the list. All my favorites like broccoli, you name it, whatever it is, they have it here. Boy, oh boy, I love portobellos. Yum. It's a vegetarian's dream here. That's great. Artichokes, too. I love my vegetables. Times have been tough for painter Jason McCoy, who says when rain washes out his work, he struggles to make ends meet. Between rent and your utilities, food is dead last. You have to keep the lights on. I have to pay the landlord or I'm out on the street, and I am that homeless person. Jason has noticed the Vincentian difference alive in this food pantry from the welcoming nature of the Vincentians to the emphasis on quality, healthy items. The staff here is very respectful. They don't treat you as any less of a person. If anything, they are like an, a family member to you, an added family that uh, you know just takes care of you. Health-wise, I mean, it's certainly more important than the sweets and, and the bread. and. Um, it's healthier for them and their family and their children and um, getting some vegetables and um, try, hopefully trying some new vegetables every once in a while. Vincent and Bev Rush is drawn to the ministry of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul for not only how it helps others, but also for how it helps her. I'm honored to do St. Vincent de Paul because uh, I think as volunteers we probably benefit as much as the people who come here because we're able to do something and not just think about it or worry about it or talk about uh, poverty and hunger. We're able to do something about it. It makes me feel good to know I'm doing something good and worthwhile. And there's a nice sense of community here. You know, you get to know some of the people that are you're working with every week. It's become, I guess, part of me and part of yeah, what I do and who I am. Those who receive produce grown with love are thankful for the people who put so much care into all of the seeding, weeding, and growing. I'm very grateful. I, would, I don't know what I would do without St. Vincent de Paul. And it reaffirms not only the health in my body, but the health of my soul to know that there's good Christian people out there that put love into just everything from vegetables to a canned goods. Back in Lacey Garden, there is one thing the Zerskreski kids are not so fond of. The weeding is probably the, the least favorite for the kids, you know, coming out with a hose, but, um, but uh, you know, it develops character, so. <laughs> Mom's, we had to do weeding in this, like, whole square of tons and tons of weeds, and we had to weed that. Right now, the garden could use some weeding, like over there and by the onions and this whole row. And just so you know, Sam likes to sample the string beans to make sure they're fresh. The bigger beans are juicier, but the smaller ones have more taste. And I like the smaller ones more. <laughs> Allowing us to be here with you as a team 
to, to do your work, to redo your work, and we get better through this. But we get better every time we see the face of Christ, the people we visit. Vincentians with a conference at Corpus Christi Catholic Church in Celebration, Florida, just outside of Orlando and its world-famous theme parks, first come together in prayer. A flurry of activity, putting together bags of food, happens before the day's home visits begin. On this day, and on many occasions, the home visits take place in a location you might not expect. This hotel is a stand and day. A stand and day, so many people come in and stay for one week, two weeks. Lourdes Rivera, an assistant manager at an Orlando area motel, most people here call her mama, says more and more, those stays have become even longer. But usually I have a whole bunch of family living in the property with children for one year, two year. Almost the family living in this hotel is the people really don't have place to stay or don't have money for pay a house. Usually he stay here. And it's, for us, it's like a family. For Vincentians Cheryl and Brian Sperry, a home visit to a low-budget motel is no longer unusual. In our area, we have a great number of people that are either unemployed or underemployed and are not able to find an expensive housing. Even if they can maybe come up with um, a location to live in, there's all those deposits that everyone has to put down any time that they move, and usually that's a lot of money and people just can't get it together. Yeah, we come here every month, and there's, uh, I guess, about 40 families that we uh, provide groceries for. We have as many hotels here as Vegas, and there's, it's like the number one tourist destination in the world. People come here not just from other states, but from all over the world. And they, they see things that are in the amusement parks, they see things that are the tourist attractions, and there's a whole different uh, life going on around them that they don't see. This motel features a food pantry. St. Vincent de Paul Orlando Vincentians keep it stocked for more than two dozen families who pretty much call this motel their home. Vincentians believe the call to serve others makes a difference for more than those being served. Spiritually, it really has made me grow quite a bit, spiritually. Um, just giving or just handing out something to your brothers and sisters in need is one thing. But when you have that combined with the love your neighbor as yourself component and combined with charity and love with God being there, it makes all uh, altogether a different situation. Everybody has a story. Some people have lived here for a year, many longer. A one bedroom motel room might be all right for a family for a night or two here on vacation. But imagine now living here with all of your possessions. That can prove very challenging. Excuse the mess, but we've got a two bedroom. Okay, and then this is our kitchenette. And down here we keep all our extra groceries. And then of course the refrigerator and then right here is uh, no extra space, keep our clothes. Cheryl Thorne shows us around what has become her home. It'll be three years in August. Cheryl struggles with health problems. The most she can afford is the $650 a month for this cramped motel room. It's a very big struggle. I mean, we're stretching it. We're, we're going, we're living on from paycheck to paycheck. It helps a lot because by the time you pay rent, car insurance, health insurance, there's really not much left. Alberta DeLillo is grateful for the Vincentian outreach. She's experienced a series of unfortunate incidents. A car accident that left her without the use of her arm, her husband struggling with health problems, medical bills eating up what little money they had. Altogether, it's left her struggling to keep her head above water. You try to do the best you can with what you have. I mean, uh, we have a refrigerator, um, a microwave, but you really can't cook the meals you want to cook. So it's, it's very frustrating in one room. You don't have the freedom to go 
wherever you want. So it's, it's a struggle. It's hard. While they may face challenges, the people living here are thankful for their Vincentian friends. I feel God sent them, and they're very special people to do this. Yep, with uh, people like the church and good friends. Well, and God, most of all, will make it. That's very kind. You know, helping out people in need that are struggling and are looking for food. That's very generous of you people, very generous. If it wasn't for people like you, how would we survive? People are so grateful just for a little bag of groceries. And, you know, it, it seems like so little, but it means so much to them. And I hope that when I stand before God after I die, he can look at my life and what I do here and say, this part of your life had meaning. Mama knows she can count on her Vincentian friends to bring Christ's love and some material assistance to people in need of a helping hand. Oh yes, and Vincent food. helped me for everything. He called me, he bring me food, he bring me bread. Right now for Christmas, I told you, he bring me the, the paper. I give it to the people in the room, for each room, for the number of the room, how many people is in the room, and he put whatever he want for Christmas for the children. And St. Vincent, he bring him here in Christmas, one week before uh, Christmas, he bring all the stuff a lot of stuff for the people. It's about what we can do. There's some people that have actually come to me and then when they're sitting there, they realize, oh, you know what? I don't really need what I thought I needed. So it's like, we're even there for like that psychological component, you know, something that they thought they needed and we sat down and worked it out and was like, I'm fine now. This is okay. Do you mind if I call you again? Don't mind. Whatever I can do. Being there, maybe once, maybe again, maybe even for a while. We are not isolated. Our relationship is not God and us. It's God and us through community and through other people. And so this gives us an opportunity to solidify, to deepen our relationship with the Lord by serving His children. <laughs> strength. We approach this day as a time to serve our neighbors in need, with you and with each other. May the spirit of prayer not only begin our work, but sustain it and conclude it as well. Prayer and reflection begin this day and every day at St. Vincent de Paul Cincinnati's Ozenham Center for Service Learning. It's part of a week of activities that introduce these young people to their neighbors struggling in poverty. As we meet high school students Anaga de Zoysa and Olivia Shamleffer, they're just beginning this eye-opening immersion experience, having visited with citizens returning from incarceration, interactions that already have them reflecting on their Catholic faith. In Matthew 25, Jesus mentions closing the naked, feeding the hungry, visiting those who are in prison. And being on an immersion retreat is really nice because we get to do all those things on a deeper level. And when we come back to chapel, we can kind of take time to reflect on everything we've gone through, everything that we, has happened during the day. It's, it's a time to process and reflect on the choices we've made and how what we've done has affected the lives of the people who are in need. I don't think you can judge anyone. I think that's a lot of what we're learning and that, that also connects us to our faith a lot because it truly is what we should do as Catholics is know that we're all equal before God. A lot of the students that come through, they have grown up in Cincinnati and they've seen the city from one perspective and the goal is really to take them around for the week and show them that there's a bit more to the city and there's another perspective to look at. Program coordinator Megan Kanapke sees perceptions change over the week while empathy increases as students find new ways to live their Catholic faith. Stuart Shumrick, a previous attendee, was moved by his week-long service learning experience and says he's seen firsthand it's not easy for people struggling in poverty. Oh God, no. I think some of those people are just struggling so hard. You know, I look at them, I think the struggles they must go through every day, I just. I never really thought about it until I hear what they talk about. 
Delaney Munchen says a home visit changed her life. Even today, she remembers every detail vividly. I walked into this man's apartment and he had absolutely nothing besides a popped air mattress on the ground. And he had, um, I think, three spoons, two knives, a fork, a pot, a pan, an empty fridge, and I think like three plates and a cup. And like, I just remember like walking in and being just shocked, um, like how he was living and how he was still the, like one of the nicest people I've ever met and just so caring. Delaney prayed with him and was moved by his spirit of generosity. He was so grateful and he started crying like a, a grown man was just like crying and um, he gave me this big hug and it was like really important to me. The home visit is a hallmark of the society as Vincentians go in pairs to meet with people in their homes. Janita Williams welcomed us into her home and allowed us to share these intimate conversations as a wave of emotions fell over Anaga and Olivia too. Words can't describe Stephen's heart and how they help families, any family that, that needs help. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's incredible, it's amazing. She was just so genuine and the, the amount of thankful, the amount of gratitude she expressed to all of us, it was just like amazing. Her, her reaction was so intense, like the, her gratitude and how thankful she was just for everything we did. I'll take the home visit any day, hands down, to the uh, office interview. You're going to their place where they, what they call home, you get to see the conditions for yourself. I was really surprised about just how much it, uh, it affected you. Um, obviously, you're meeting the people in their homes, and that means something, but it's crazy. It just makes it so much more personal. The spirit's been moving, and everybody um, has joined into this relationship throughout the home visit, and it's, it's normally just a short visit. You know, it's maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, but there's something special that happens in that time and um, to be able to pray together at the end and to have our neighbor be able to lead that is something that always is special. Previous attendees share similar memories of their home visits. Their fridge was almost empty. They had nothing. I've never seen um, just a type of, just how bare, like a bear of a situation he was living in. Um, so I walked in the apartment and the first thing the father and all the kids did was they ran up to me, gave me a huge hug, and he grabbed what little he had out of his fridge and offered to make us breakfast. And when he said that, I was, I started, tears were welling up in my eyes. Kate Sampson's experiences opened her eyes to a new reality. I'd met so many amazing people with amazing stories. It really humbled me and showed me that these people are people just like me. Uh, they didn't do anything wrong to be here. Um, I very well could be in a situation like they could be in. Um, it was very humbling and taught me really to look at people like the people they are. Immersion organizers say visiting low-income neighborhoods helps break down barriers, allowing the students to more fully understand the journey someone else is on while helping attendees like Abby Smith come out of their own comfort zone. It's not like you're serving down to them. It's not like a you don't pity them, they're not below you. You're at the same level as them and you're connecting through your service as though you're all just on an even playing field as like children of God. <laughs> Carry and go, you can get all your furniture half price. Milton Plaza's larger than life personality is always on display at the St. Vincent de Paul Orlando thrift store's Apopka, Florida location. Positive and upbeat now, Milton's life was nearly derailed after spending more than a decade of his life behind bars for drug related crimes. People gave me chances, they trusted in me, they see something in me that other people didn't see and especially the, the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Through the outreach of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul's Jail and Prison Ministry Conference of St. Peter Claver, Milton and others are earning a second chance. The ministry relies upon a network of trained volunteer mentors to provide much needed support. It made me feel loved because my father didn't show me that growing up. I had to learn that the hard way. You know, I thought that love was 
the men in the street selling drugs and this and that. So my father wasn't there. So, you know, when when these guys came in, uh, they 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 showed us unconditional love, and that really that 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 hit, you know. Home. Substance abuse led Jennifer Keen, a young mother of two, to commit crimes to pay for her habit, and this almost ruined her life. That plunged me into the depths of addiction. Pretty much, it was gradual, but it escalated and escalated to the point that I was using my prescription medication as a legal drug addict. Jennifer's relationship with Catholic volunteers and Vincentian members of the society like Barb Bowden and Pat Baird provided an important lifeline. That's really our mission is to bring them, you know, Jesus' word of hope and love and forgiveness um, so they feel that and uh, it's very touching, you know, very very, um, you know, it's a very humbling experience because I think they, they're so appreciative and yet we're the ones that definitely see, you know, we see Jesus in them. They're there because they want to be there. They're there because they want to hear um, uh, the, the word. They want to talk about the word. They want to, they want to get feedback. They want to express their feelings. They're um, many times looking for how they how they could get forgiveness. He's going to keep on doing what he's got to do until that right spot comes along in his life. You just got to do the leg work. You just got to put in 100% and you'll get where you need to go. Everything's going good so far. I'm trying to stay on the right track, avoid any negativity at all costs. Program participants and mentors come together for regular stay out of jail nights to share their stories and find support from a caring community. It's moments like these that inspire conference president Bruce Stumbris. Visiting these men in prison is where I see the face of Christ more than anywhere else in the world. One of the keys to success for the St. Peter Claver prison ministry happens here at Father Ennis Village. What may look like a simple trailer park for these returning citizens is a new lease on life. I didn't have nowhere. I didn't have nowhere to go. I mean, as soon as I, as soon as I was getting released from prison, I had no, I had nothing, no money, no job, no house, no nothing. Support of housing was a key to John Frames rebuilding his life. With a roof over his head, Frames landed a full-time job. He says he couldn't have done it without the helping hand provided by compassionate Vincentian volunteers. Oh, I'm I'm very grateful. This is this is my family. I mean, this 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 is my family. You know, St. Vincent de Paul was my beginning. Dozens of program enrollees have rebuilt their self-esteem and made important connections to jobs. We have a number of guys that started here and now are managing organizations that are, you know, have 18, 20 dollar hour jobs. Volunteers like Ruben A. Santabria feel a calling to help people who have served their time and who want to make a difference in their lives. The problem they're having is once they get out of prison, society shuts the doors on them. And we're the only ones that have been opening these doors for them so that they can come back and they'll be useful in society. <laughs> Ben Gross also plays an important role in this ministry, making sure men like him who are released from prison have a backpack built with love. I come down here every Monday and I fill out bags uh, and I give them extra clothes. I give them uh, a couple pairs of pants, a pair of shorts if we have them, uh, a couple pairs of socks, two pairs of boxers, uh, toiletries, a pair, of, a pair of shoes and jackets if it's winter weather. And that way these guys have the things that they need because it's already hard enough for guys getting out of prison to find a job find a place to live than if he's wearing the same pair of clothes for two or three days. Every year, the St. Peter Claver Prison Ministry provides hundreds of re-entry kits to several incarceration facilities in Central Florida. Volunteers often hear from grateful recipients. Ben says this simple token provides dignity and respect. When I first got out of prison, I lived under, uh, I was, it wasn't a bad, it was a bad situation. And when I got a, a nice pair of shoes and I got a nice suit, and nice, you know, a tie. It's such a good feeling, you know, to have those things. To know that you're not just a, an inmate where you think people are looking at you. Now it's like, I'm, look at me, I'm dressed nicely, I'm going to church, I'm, I'm showing that I have nice clothes. It's, it's, it gives you a feeling of, I'm a, uh, like, I'm, I'm really a member of society. Inspired by gospel values, Vincentian volunteers are growing in their spirituality through this person-to-person -person service. This is priceless. The satisfaction that I get is that when I'm with them and I help them, 
I've confirmed what the Lord told me to do. This is your mission. You need to help these people get out of prison and be in society and be better persons in society. I feel the Holy Spirit in the room with us. It's, it's, it's really, uh, it, 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 it's very infectious. I always leave there after my few hours of being there feeling like I've gotten way much more from my time than I've given. Make no mistake, the people being served are grateful. There is a tomorrow, there is a future, there is a hope, and these trials and tribulations can become your testimony for a life full of expectations and enormous opportunities if, if you are determined enough. Like Jennifer, Milton Plaza is determined to make the most of his second chance. It's been beautiful. Um, I've been, I've been, I've been here four years and, uh, and St. Vincent and Paul gave me opportunity in life and now I'm taking the advantage of it to the full, to the fullest. Um, uh, now, uh, you know, I met this great woman in my life and uh, I'm getting married in September, you know, and uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing because, you know, I thought that nobody, somebody like me can ever do that, make that 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 transition, that jump, you know, and it was it, it's, it's beautiful because God has blessed me. When you work in prison ministry, uh, you really see God's love and mercy uh, in action. <laughs> Signed in a pound phone. Let's see. Ethel Combs is more than a volunteer who answers the phone and greets patients at the St. Vincent de Paul Community Pharmacy in Baton Rouge. I was diagnosed with adenoid polymorphous cancer of the right palate, and I had my surgery like in 2005 and went through my, my chemo and my treatments, and then I came here to get medicine because in all the process of having the cancer treatments and all of that, even though I had insurance at the time, I just depleted all of my savings. And so I came here to get my medicine. Ethel says she couldn't afford the very medicine she needed to stay alive. She understands what it's like to feel embarrassed to ask for help. And it's why she gives of her time as a volunteer. I'm the first person that the people see when they come in the door. So I try to make it as pleasant as possible because I've been there. Hello, how y'all doing? Hey. Jamal Hunter relies upon the generosity of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. What I was making at $7.90 an hour, it couldn't pay for all the prescriptions that I needed. Prescriptions Jamal could not live without. They're there for me in all kind of ways. They do save my life. They have saved my life. Vincentian Anna George and her husband Lawrence believe the community pharmacy does vital work to preserve the health and dignity of those in need. Vincentians do not judge those who they serve. Rather, they seek to understand them as they would a brother or sister. And I see the people. I know a lot of them are really working hard and doing everything right, but they still can't quite make it. And it's really good to know that you can make a difference in someone's life. You see a lot of these people that, that, that come in and uh, they're really down on their luck, and they need, they, you know, they really need the assistance. And uh, you can't, you know, you think that you're really doing something good. You're contributing something, I guess, to society. While Anna had worked in the pharmacy field for 16 years, Vincentian Phil Bruder was a novice when he came to this pharmacy right after it opened in 1995. My experience has nothing to do with pharmacy. <laughs> My experience is in construction and maintenance. Phil was inspired to become a licensed pharmacy tech so he could better live his Vincentian vocation to help his brothers and sisters. Phil's family was helped by the society when he was a child, and he has never forgotten the help he received. He picks up donated medicine from nursing homes, sorts through the meds, and disposes expired pills. Most of them are desperate. They only their life, life, lifeline where they can get medicines. If they can't get it here, there's nowhere else for them to go. More than 30,000 prescriptions worth approximately $3.2 million are dispensed here at the St. Vincent de Paul Community Pharmacy. But none of that would be accomplished without the generous donation of time, 
from volunteer pharmacists. Volunteer Chris Godet, a pharmacist for 40 years before retirement, follows his faith as a Catholic as he gives back to help his neighbors. Anything that you would see in a, in a typical drugstore, like a CVS or Walgreens, you see the same kind of ailments and, and disabilities come into this pharmacy, whether it's mental health, blood pressure, HIV, um, psychiatric diseases, diabetes. It's a wide range of illnesses that we actually are able to treat. And it costs people what? Nothing. There's, there's no charge at all. Staff pharmacist Charles Side says the prescriptions come from donations from nursing homes and pharmacies that donate bulk medication to support the society's mission of mercy to help the forgotten, the suffering, and the deprived. Like I just gave that lady some medication that was uh, probably about $4,000. For her, for I think it was her husband that was uh, just come out of the hospital. It's such a blood thinner that he has to use for like uh, he can get 20, 30 days. And Charles knows his work is life saving. It's a good feeling, it really is, because you see some people that you uh, they, they couldn't they couldn't make it. If they didn't have the if St. Vincent Paul wasn't here to help us. If this particular pharmacy wasn't part of the community, those individuals wouldn't be served at all. And you would have people who are diabetics, people who are asthmatics, who wouldn't be treated. Their disease states would get uh, more debilitated to the point where they would either die or they would have to go into the hospital emergency room. The Vincentian calling to bring Christ's love and to serve others gives the Georges so much joy. I get so much more out of it too. I mean, I really get a lot out of it myself. I get, they give me, you know, I see myself, I could be in that condition. And if I were, I would hope someone would help me. So I know how blessed I am. And I really want to give back because God's been good to me, to both of us. We look upon it kind of, you know, as an opportunity to, uh, to help those in need, those aren't as, as fortunate as, uh, as we are. Ethel relates to the patients and encourages them to reach out to the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. She knows the caring and compassionate Vincentians and Catholic volunteers are eager to help their neighbors in need. Don't be embarrassed, don't be nervous. These people are here to help you and they enjoy it. It's a pleasure for them to help you. The person-to-person -person service that the Society is known for makes a profound impact on people. Jamal is grateful the society treats her with love and respect. They feel more love for another person than just themselves. I thank God for them, for being there. They're just like family. You are looking at a massive food operation run by the Society of St. Vincent de Paul of Phoenix. More than six million pounds of food arrive in these warehouses every year. Society volunteer Kate Samalek and Vincentian Phyllis O'Toole are on the front lines. The sorting process is to open up a wonderful big carton, look and see what's in there, and then decide where, where each item needs to go. Mainly sort food. We, we keep what's good, we check dates, we throw out what's ripped open, too badly damaged. Soon after Kate and Phyllis and scores of other volunteers do all of the sorting, Vincentian's Robert Lansendorfer and Ron Robinson arrive to pick up food that helps restock the pantry run by the conference at the Cathedral of St. Simon and Jude in Phoenix. We pick up basics, eggs, hot dogs, uh, condiments, water, we're, we're open and anything we can have we, we distribute. We always have, had, always have supply on hand, and this place supplies it in addition to what we purchase. Well, we, we have usually two pallets uh, of food preset for us. So they'll load those, pre, uh, those uh, preset pallets, and then they, they have other stuff around which does not go on the pallets. Like today, we managed to get some canned food, uh, cake mixes, bottled water, uh, sometimes some uh, some cleansing materials uh, and we find whatever we can that we can use and give out and 
we take all of that back to the pantry and it moves fast. Father Bud Pelletier Jr. believes the society offers people many ways to live their faith. What I think is wonderful about it, especially the, the food program that we have here, is that it can involve you no matter where you think your talents are. Um, there are some people who love to go person to person, who love meeting people and engaging people. And there's that that happens at the local conferences where they go out and they meet with um, the, the people who, who uh, call and ask for, for aid and assistance. Um, there might be people who are a little more shy. Gee, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could go to someone's house. That's all right. Um, we have ways of doing that. Can you help pack a food box? Yeah, maybe I can do that. Can you help um, go, to the, go to the store and help us pick up the products that are donated? Um, can you help us in your local parish, maybe with a food drive? Um, can you come down to our sorting facility? And I mean, it's a volunteer activity to stand and sort cans. It may not sound um, glamorous and, oh, well, what did you do to help the poor today? Oh, I sorted cans. How did you find the face of Christ today? Oh, I, was, I put a can of green beans over here. Um, but you know something? If that's where your talents and your abilities are, on the kitchen side of things, um, you know, there are people who have wonderful um, culinary skills or there are people who don't have wonderful culinary skills. But you know something? They can, they can chop, they can sort, they can wash, they can open a can. And all of that is a participation in mission. It's the mission of the society, which reads in part, Vincentians are united in an international society of charity by their spirit of poverty, humility, and sharing that resonates with society volunteers. You feel like God is with you because every now and then something would happen when I'd be out delivering and just, it seems like God would step in the way and, and give you a chance to do something you wouldn't normally do. Well, the fellowship is what I like. And the, think, the thought that all of this food is going to these different places is just amazing. I've been in three different parishes in Phoenix, and they've all had active, active St. Vincent de Paul societies. And even as a little girl, I can remember certain people in our parish that were so devoted to St. Vincent de Paul. I like helping people. I, I really, really do. And in, it, in addition to food, I pray a lot for them too. I, I think this is very important. And, and it's, it's very nice to be able to help somebody that is hurting and seems to have no other place to turn. Satisfaction, uh, you know, and, and also there's a lot of church involved here, you know. You, you, it's a requirement that you help those who don't have as much as you do and who really need the help. I mean, that's not just uh, uh, something that makes you feel good. I mean, you're required to do something like that. So we all do. And the people that, boy, I, I work with, it, unbelievable. Some of the food processed here on the main campus for St. Vincent de Paul in Phoenix is prepared by volunteers like Mike. He's opening up cans of vegetables that will be used in the meals served later in the day at this dining room and at four other locations across Phoenix. Single mom Claudia Tria says she feels comfortable bringing her kids to St. Vincent's dining room. The meals, they're, well, I think they're good. They're really good. And um, I like how there's a lot of families here. You know, you don't feel weird when you come here. Like a lot of people, they need help. You know, when they go places, they feel uncomfortable. Here, I don't. Claudia appreciates how she and her family are welcomed and treated with dignity and respect hallmarks of the society. Well, actually, I've never um, really gone anywhere else. You know, I mean, when I would hear about going to other places that help you, I would, you know, like prideful or a little like embarrassed. But when I when I first came here, I, a friend actually told me about this place. And once I came, like, like I said, I seen all the families. So I was just like, well, you know, I just fit right in. And it was real comfortable. Everybody greets you at the door. They say hi, hello. You know what I mean? Real respectful. They're, they're nice. Lily Bates and her husband Randy care for their grandson. The warm meals served by Caring Hearts help them make ends meet. Oh yes, yes. Uh, we live on our social security, me and my husband. I'm disabled and he is too. So after paying our rent, we get a little bit of food stamps, but not enough to really put in, you know. So coming here in the afternoon, you know, in the evenings after the, he gets out of school, it 
prolongs our meals. You know, we, we have more for the weekend meals when they're not open, but you know, it helps us. And it, we, I have a lot of friends here. We socialize and I meet a lot of different people. Vincentian Frank Barrio says the society has created a family atmosphere driven by person to person contact. Tonight, uh, we never have a shortage of people who want to come and serve the poor and uh, meet them, shake their hands. Uh, it, it's not a, a spiritual experience, but also friendly atmosphere where they feel at ease. They're not coming to a food line somewhere. No, they're coming to a, a, a friendly atmosphere and their kids will sit and play and, are, are the, and, and learn. Lily says life's ups and downs have tested her faith. Sometimes she's not sure how she would manage without St. Vincent de Paul's help. Right, it's like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? And then, then St. Vincent de Paul opened the door. They're, you know, they're, they're your lifeline. That's what I say, they're your lifeline saying, okay, we're here. I'm your lifeline. Vincentians take the responsibility of being just such a lifeline seriously. Once you get started and you meet the people in need, uh, it's the old saying I mentioned before, once you're a member of St. Vincent de Paul, um, uh, you're going to stay there till you die. And that is true with me and most of the members of, uh, uh, most of them, once they've started with St. Vincent de Paul, they don't quit. They stay until their last breath because what we do is important and uh, the spirituality is a big part of it. Father Bud says the Society of St. Vincent de Paul's invitation to serve is something every Catholic should prayerfully consider. That's a call from God. That's an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It may not seem like it at the time, but when you give that inspiration a chance to work, when you put that inspiration into action, then it begins to grow. It starts this wonderful thing that, you know, as God continues to grace you in that ministry, you begin to understand what the grace of God is in your own life. When you begin to serve in that mission, when you begin to let that mission have an active part in your life, like I said, as simple as moving that can of green beans. I always use green beans, by the way, because I hate green beans. But um, the can of green beans, when it moves from place to place, you're letting God inspire you to do that. And anything that lets the Lord in, in any way, shape, or form, the Lord is going to take that opportunity. The Holy Spirit is going to take that opportunity to grow and strengthen and be an active part of your life. And then all of a sudden, you'll realize, wait a minute, this has helped me grow. This has helped me in my relationship. It's kind of stealthy. It's kind of sneaky. But you know something? If that's what it takes for the Lord, more power. Oh, years of pain, misery, um, a lot of tooth problems, uh, a lot of repairs through the years, uh, a lot of dentists, a lot of bad dentists. Christopher Robinson has lived with bad teeth for years, made even worse when his oldest daughter accidentally kicked him in the mouth while swimming. Well, since then, it, it's been years, and I had nothing up front, and just it's been terrible, all the, the misconceptions and the, you know, the... Uh, the things that people think are wrong with you. Dental insurance was a luxury this family of five simply could not afford on Christopher's salary. His wife, Rebecca, is a stay-at-home mom who raises their children. When you're struggling, you know, struggling and, you, and you've got your basic insurance but it doesn't come with vision or dental, you know, it, you're, 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 it gets sacrificed. Thankfully, the Robinson family learned about Society of St. Vincent de Paul Detroit's dental clinic that provides underserved residents access to affordable, often cost-free basic dental care with the added Vincentian touch of care provided with dignity. Come on in, come sit down. Our dental clinic uh, is a great example of this one-on-one -on -one personal uh, contact. And not only are people being served, but the people who are doing the serving also benefit and are influenced by the encounter. Monsignor Chuck Kosanke, longtime spiritual advisor for the Society of St. Vincent de Paul Detroit, sees how Vincentians and volunteers live their faith and help change lives inside this dental clinic every day. It's not just about fixing teeth. <laughs> Some people think, oh great, that's great that they have a free dental clinic. You know, uh, fixing people's teeth, that's a great thing. But it's much more than that because when your teeth are fixed, then you smile. When your teeth are fixed, 
it helps your diet. When your teeth are fixed, it helps your relationship with other people. It may be even point to, to getting a job. Monsignor Kosanke believes the Vincentian spirit thrives during every patient visit. It goes back to the personal encounter, which is a hallmark of the Society of St. Vincent Paul. And because of the personal encounter, it's, it's really concretely uh, seeing that this, this is a human person uh, in need. It's, it's not just a number. Uh, it's just not about um, you know, the, how many people we can help even, but each person that's helped. And it's all about that. It goes back to that encounter. Vincentian Lorenz Danhausen with the Holy Trinity Conference in Port Huron, Michigan, says the people he sees simply can't afford basic dental care. None of the people that we've met, that I've met, were in a position to pay for this service if it were to be at a regular dentist. There's no way. Lorenz says having this dental clinic available is something he keeps in mind during home visits. It's become a valuable resource for people who otherwise would struggle to afford dental care. It changed them. They had a smile, they had self-confidence, they had an image, they fit better into our society and the workforce. So for this clinic to be here to service the people that it has for the number of years it has is the best thing that could happen to Detroit. Dr. Wendy Shine, a retired dentist, knew she could put her skills and talents to work helping people in need right in her community. If I'm here, I'm getting people back into the world, back into the workplace, back into society, back functional, back into their family pictures. And I can't think of a better way to use all my experience from all the years I was a dentist in practice to still being a dentist, just using it in a different way. It's stories like these, when the society provides comfort to those members of the community who are so often overlooked, that inspires dental director Nancy Harmon. We see men, we see women, we see um, young people, we see older people, we see, uh, I, I use the term broken, people who are broken and they just need someone to listen to them, somebody to help them to get to the next place. Nancy knew of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul Detroit and its dental clinic through her work with another nonprofit and felt she had to be a part of this special ministry. One of the places I could refer them to was St. Vincent de Paul. And I thought, wow, they are so great. You know, there weren't many places we could refer people to. And I thought, I want to do something great for St. Vincent de Paul. And then I get to come. And that was just so wonderful that I get to be part of this. Which brings us back to the Robinson family. St. Vincent de Paul Detroit Dental Clinic doctors went right to work. Christopher endured several tooth extractions and weeks of pain. I had um, nine removed from the top. Everything back here and two giant molars that were um, all brand new crowns I just had put on like three years ago. The Robinsons' daughters, Dharma and Neva, say most of their childhood memories are of a father whose self-esteem suffered because of his bad teeth. His teeth were kind of gross, nasty, broken up. He would just like go like this and hide them all the time. He um, never had the confidence, so whenever we wanted to go out or go to somebody's house or just hang out with anybody, he didn't want to go. He never wanted to go anywhere. He would never smile. I have never seen my father with teeth in my life. Oh my gosh, I praise this place. Everywhere I go, every person I see. Inspired by her husband's story, Rebecca reached out to St. Vincent de Paul Detroit too, a decision that changed her health. When we came here, they had to do a blood pressure test and mine was through the roof. That high blood pressure reading would lead to a far more serious diagnosis than a possible cavity needing to be filled. And because of that, I uh, inadvertently had learned um, from that that I had diabetes. We know now that people that have oral infections, for instance, their blood sugar is very difficult to control when they have diabetes. And their internist may be tripling their insulin dosage. And in the meantime, we're in here saying, yeah, you've got bad teeth and perio disease. Let's take care of that. We can get their diabetes under control. Now, Rebecca is working to improve her diet and get healthy, all because of a trip to the dentist. I can't express how much gratitude I have for these people and 
for them to volunteer their time and their talent and their efforts is just, um, it, it's a blessing. I mean, Heavenly Father is definitely, um, I, I feel his, his presence with, um, with these people and their generosity because without them, a lot of us wouldn't have these stories. You will never change people's lives more in one hour than the hour you spend here with people that really need and appreciate what we do for them. Every one of them, they've always told me that they appreciate what St. Vincent de Paul did for them. All Vincentians, they touch one person, they touch that person's family and all the people around that person. Every day we save lives and we love to say that. It's not just an organization you donate money to. It's not just an organization that you send clothes and food to. But again, it's, it's trying to bring uh, the love of Jesus to the people in the community. I tell everybody that this place, if, if, you, if you're in need and, and you qualify, this is where to go. It truly is. I mean, these guys do miracles here. In Spanish, of course, it means people. When the Spanish conquest occurred in 1598 and the early explorers moved up towards uh, the north of New Mexico, this is where they came upon um, uh, many Pueblo, what they term Pueblo because of the dwellings. They were living in uh, adobe dwellings. Some were two-story, so they dubbed them Pueblos, and that's how we became known as Pueblos. Leona Atencio stops by the St. Vincent de Paul food pantry at the parish of San Juan Bautista on the Oque Owenge Pueblo in New Mexico. She struggles to make ends meet and is grateful for the groceries she receives. Wonderful, wonderful. I rely on them quite a bit. Whenever that I need their help, they're there for me. They are great, awesome. Leona's spirits have been buoyed by the outreach of the Vincentian community as she's grieved the death of her daughter and grandchild in a car accident. Stronger, stronger with their help, St. Vincent de Paul's help. And then she just offered me two rosaries, which was really heartwarming. Vincentia Nettie Allerid says she's blessed to be able to help neighbors like Leona. <sighs> it's just rewarding. It, it's when you make a home visit and you, you visit with his people and you sit there with them and, and you come out and you thank God for what you have, but also for what you can do for them. And when you walk out the door and they give you a great big old hug and thank you and uh, it just makes your day. It just makes, there was a reason God put me there. Nancy Salazar turned to St. Vincent de Paul when she started raising her five grandchildren. Her husband wasn't working. Then he got sick and spent time in the hospital. It's difficult to feed five children, growing children. And uh, these are my grandchildren that I raised, and they're big eaters. Nancy knew of St. Vincent de Paul for its thrift stores, where she buys clothing for her grandkids, and soon learned the society helps in other ways, too. I just happened to ask the lady there at St. Vincent's de Paul, do they have a program for feeding families, you know, that in need. And she said, yes, ma'am. She said, we do through the churches here in the valley. Vincentians Elviria Aquino and Julia Hanneberger say the society is a natural fit in the OK Owenge Pueblo. St. Vincent de Paul just matches that whole aspect of community. So it was easy to recognize St. Vincent de Paul as a society to um, trust within the community because they acted as if, as our community does and we take care of each other. I think uh, Northern New Mexico in general and in this Pueblo, there is a feeling of strong spirituality to our Catholic religion. <clears throat> and I feel that this is the place that St. Vincent de Paul, uh, that's why it's here because of the spirituality of the place. Vincentian John E. Bird grew up on this Pueblo as a child serving as an altar server during daily mass. Now a deacon and a Vincentian, he says this is a tight-knit community. Loving, first of all, uh, very concerned about each other, but most of all I think is they're very cultural. Uh, they're very concerned about keeping their culture alive and well. 
Vincentian Jimmy Gutierrez has been serving through the society since the early days of this conference's formation. Listening to their problems and for them to express it is a, a big uh, relief. And then they find themselves that somebody is listening and is concerned about them to actually come to their house to uh, listen to their problems and be willing to help out with whatever they can. The Conference of San Juan Bautista O.K. Awenge is a part of the fabric of this community. Pastor at this parish says he's not sure what the community would do without the caring hearts of the Vincentians. As much as one pastor would like to try to do it all himself, that pastor really can't do it all himself. And that's the wisdom that we learn in Scripture. Jesus chose 12 apostles. You know, he chose 12. And we're called to share our ministry with others as well. Father Trambley especially appreciates the home visit being an essential part of the Vincentian charism. Every person that's going out to do a home visit is another light of Christ in the community. And so there should be many people that are going forth to share this light of Christ in so many different ways. And, and St. Vincent de Paul is a valuable part of that ministry. And they are truly living out the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. The face of Christ, the suffering Christ, Christ that's reaching out to us, telling us, here I am, I'm reaching out to you. Just hold my hand. Even sometimes when they bring a basket to somebody, that person might just want to talk for a little bit. You know, and how, how is that? Well, you know, you might be consoling the doubtful or consoling the sorrowful, you know, and, and counseling the doubtful. You might be uh, giving comfort to somebody who's mourning. You might be just that ear that, that a person needed in that moment. There's so many wonderful things that Vincentians do. Vincentians say they know they receive far more in return than they're ever able to give. I had no idea what I was getting into. And now I thank God every day that I did because it, it's so rewarding to help so many people in any way, in every way. The neighbors being served are grateful for their Vincentian friends. Prayer, I felt the prayer from the Lord above and from the St. Vincent of Paul. I feel like I'm loved, um, like a sense of relief every time I see them. It's like, um, just soothing. They're wonderful people. Pam Matambonanzo and Vincentians with the conference at St. Mary of the Lake Catholic Church in Chicago assemble bags of food and water to go with backpacks of personal care items. This financial advisor is grateful she has the opportunity to live her Vincentian charism to seek and find the homeless on the streets of the Windy City. The St. Vincent de Paul Society is the oldest uh, charitable organization within Chicago. Um, so we've been working with the poor and the homeless for a long time. So we do, we are aware of the things that they need and where they can go. After the Chicago Council opened its Pope Francis Center, the Vincentians needed a way to introduce their services to the homeless and suffering in the area. When you move a little bit more into the city, it's, you know, we use the term desert, where de food deserts, but we, we have a desert area where social services are concerned. The backpacks became a way to open a dialogue between Vincentians and the people they serve. The backpack program is a wonderful success. We stuff them with soap, towels, toothpaste, uh, kind of necessary things for people. We didn't know how to approach them, to say to them, you know, if you need anything, you know, please come in. You know, so we, we needed sort of like an icebreaker type of thing. So we thought we heard about, you know, we came across the survival packs that other people give out. If we could put together a backpack that had several items in it, along with it, a list of services around that particular zip code that they were, the, the homeless people were, that we would be able to speak to them about the services that we provided. Miguel is grateful for the outreach of Chicago Vincentians. Somos personas desamparadas, no tenemos trabajo por el momento. Me dijeron, ve a este sitio, ahí te van a ayudar. 
y yo llegué y me brindaron ayuda, yo me sentí muy contento, muy, muy agradable. Seeing the face of Christ in those who are suffering and deprived is at the core of Vincentian spirituality. If we're able to go to them and say, okay, here's some food, here's a backpack, you know, you are able to connect. And that connection for myself as a Vincentian has been very enlightening and rewarding and it has allowed me to grow spiritually. Vincentian Bill Susi says the society's essential element of service is to establish a personal contact between its members and those who suffer, which we often see in the person-to-person -person visits in homes or on the streets. The spiritual aspect is key for any of us that are working with those, our neighbors in need, so it, it's the centerpiece. We're there to just bring them love, bring them prayers, and and hopefully some hope and and help them with, yes, their rent and their material need as well. Our neighbors affect our livelihood. And if, if we don't work together, we don't make a better neighborhood. Down the street, there is somebody who really needs to know that you're around and that you are able to help them. Home visits are the essential activity of the society, be it visiting people in their homes, motels, prisons, the woods, or the streets. Anywhere people are hurting and in need of some material help and Christ's love. Home visiting is, is, is somewhat unique to the society. I don't know if we're the only ones that do that, but nevertheless, that's where we really are boots on the ground. We really see what what's going on with people. We really care for them. Like I said, we're, we feel like Christ is sitting at cross from us when we're there. Darnell Pippen appreciates that Vincentians reach out to people where they are. It was very hard for us because our family looked at us as outcasts. For you guys to come out here to help us, it's very like so much a blessing because you don't have that everywhere you look. Vincentians regularly help with immediate needs such as food, clothing, and shelter. An important part of the Vincentian charism is to help people help themselves. The Vincentian values is, first of all, to give immediate assistance to somebody. Then, after we do that, after we give them something to eat, after we give them the very immediate necessity, like water, a bottle of cold water, then from there, we try to help them help themselves. Pam has seen her spirituality grow through interactions with her brothers and sisters. St. Vincent de Paul Society sort of like gave meaning to, to what I do. So for me, this sort of like really did put me front and center with the people. It made me realize that I have a lot more to be grateful for, that, that the Lord has given me a lot more than I realized, and that I have a lot more to give even. Pam and her fellow Vincentians enjoy making a difference in the community. They have found that the society gives them the chance to live their Catholic faith, and they end up receiving more than they give. In today's United States, yes, poverty is still with us, but so too is the spirit and charism of a 400-year-old French saint whose example lives on through the nearly 100,000 dedicated men and women of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Today, they are joined with nearly 900,000 Vincentians in a network of charity around the world. The poor may always be with us. Join us, and when we all put our faith in action, we can help them improve their lives, one person, one family at a time. The needy live among us. For everyone we pray If we live our faith In action Can we lift them up Today Lift them up with inspiration of works of mercy and love to proclaim now we can see you 
we're finding Vincent. They serve the poor who go forth in your name. We're finding Vincent through those who are serving, through works of mercy and love to proclaim. We're finding Vincent in our brothers and sisters who go forth in your name, who go forth in your name.